Cats are so skilled at learning new things that they can even learn tricks that dogs can't. There are seven levels of cat tricks and today you're going to see with your own eyes how far can cat training go. From easy to unimaginable. Level one, creating routine. You go to the kitchen and you open the fridge and before you notice your cat is there staring at you with a slight tail twitch, mildly anxious, wondering am I going to get something for free this time? Routine is a very strong motivator and your cat will learn to expect something just by observing you move around the house. Use routine to your favor helping your cat understand what comes next. And another positive side effect of routine is predictability. Predictability allows your cat to live a more relaxed life because they know what to expect. Some ways in which you can use routine to your favor to improve your cat life. Feeding schedule, daily litter box routine with the cleaning done always at the same hour. Going to bed always at the same time. This one is crucial if you want your cat to not wake you up. And waking up always at the same time, regardless of the weekday. For cats, every day is cat day. On the other hand though, there are routines that you don't want your cat to learn. When you go to the vet, for instance, the carrier should not be associated with going to the vet. Or else, whenever you take the carrier out, your cat is going to know that something bad is happening and they're gonna hide, making it almost impossible for you to grab them to go to the vet. Try to take the carrier out from wherever you're storing it inconsistently so your cat can appreciate having a carrier around to use it at their will. Then whenever you need to use that carrier to go on a trip or to take your cat to the vet, your cat is not going to be associating that carrier with experiences that make them anxious. And despite routine, it's very easy to teach your cat. It's also very helpful in cats that have already advanced training skills. Before going on a walk with your cat, if you ask your cat to sit and stay, they're going to learn that before going out, they need to sit, stay, and wait for the harness to be on. This way, you're going to prevent door dashing. Another routine that you can teach a cat that has advanced training skills, it's to sit and stay for their food. If you ask your cat to wait on a particular area, every time that you feed them, you're going to see that your cat goes to that particular area on their own when they want you to feed them, preventing them from being on top of you when you're manipulating the can or silverware on the counter, making it safer for them, and for you. I'm going to go from level 1 to level 7 in about 10 minutes. If you think you need more time and you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, consider checking our Patreon account, where members have the option to engage in one-on-one -on -one conversations with us to answer their questions. Level 2, luring. From here onwards, the training is going to be intentional. We're going to be using a form of operant conditioning, which is clicker training. Clicker training is a form of reinforcement that leverages the fact that behaviors that are rewarded are more likely to be repeated. You don't know what clicker training is and you would like to learn, take a look at this video where I explain what clicker training is and in three very easy steps how to teach it to your cat. The easiest trick that we can purposefully teach our cat is luring. Luring uses food to help your cat do the behavior that you want them to do by following the food. Are you familiar with the image of a donkey following a carrot? That's luring. Finger targeting is also a form of luring. You place a treat between your finger and your thumb and you move your index finger up and down. Your cat is going to go for the treat that's between my thumb and my index finger, but they're also going to learn that if there's an index finger going up and down, they're going to get a treat. And you can use luring to teach your cat to come when cold. You will find the videos of the tricks that I'm talking about in this video in the description box down below, so I don't need to point to the ceiling every two minutes. Level three, it's luring and marking. Level 3 consists of tricks that leverage luring to get your cat to do something and then marking the behavior when it happens. I really recommend the clicker for training but that's a topic for another day. If you don't have a clicker don't worry you can use the word yes or good to train your cat. Examples of luring and marking are sit or spin. To teach your cat to sit you're going to place a treat above their head. At some point, they're not going to be able to look further up and in order to continue following the treat with their eyes, they're going to sit. When they sit, you click, then reward. To teach a cat to spin, the process is very similar. You will grab the treat and you will move the treat around your cat. Your cat is going to follow the treat and at some point, they're going to complete a spin. At that time, you click, then reward. Level four. Shaping. Shaping is the easiest way to teach advanced tricks. And I have a full video talking about it. This video is so important that you can find the link here. But 
it will also be in the description box down below. Shaping consists on separating a very difficult trick into smaller problems. And the combination of all these little problems will get your cat to the final trick that you want them to. Think of it like a bachata class. You start with the easy steps and you add some movement during the class. And at the end of the class, you are able to do the whole choreography. Okay, I do not dance bachata, so I have no idea what I'm talking about, but I guess they do it that way. For example, to teach a cat to jump through your arms, you cannot just put your arms here and be like, hey, jump. So we're going to separate this into smaller problems. We're going to first put our arm on the floor, maybe, towards something, and we're just going to get our cat going over it using finger targeting. When the cat knows this behavior, we can raise the arm just a little bit high enough so that it makes it more difficult, but not too high so that they can go underneath. Next step could be, okay, I will just add the arm on top, but I'm not going to make them jump yet. When they already know how to go through your arms, when your arm is fairly low, you can start raising your arms up and your cat is going to continue jumping through your arms as you ask them. Same thing goes to get your cat to jump on your shoulder. Come on, good girl. This video is also available in the description box down below. Come on. Level five, it's all about stopping impulses. One of the most difficult things in this world is to compete with your cat's willingness to do something else. You sometimes want to stop your cat from getting too close to a dangerous situation, or you want them to stop getting their nose on the food while you're preparing it. Teaching your cat to wait for a release command will help you prepare the food without them clawing at you and running the risk of getting hurt with a can, for instance. Teaching your cat to sit and stay will even help you take better pictures of your cat. You start by asking your cat to sit, then you ask them to stay. You do the hand gesture and you reward them immediately. You know what's there funny? This works because they don't know what you're rewarding them for. You're rewarding them for doing nothing. And that's exactly what you're looking for. Repeat the process and take a little little longer every time before you reward. You ask them to sit, you ask them to stay, wait a second, good, and then reward. After a few repetitions, your cat is going to learn that doing nothing is exactly the behavior that's getting them the reward. And you might be wondering, so why is this trick difficult? Because as soon as you add competing stimuli, as soon as you add something that your cat wants to do instead of waiting, then it's where it gets hard. You're going to continue doing the same with a competing stimuli, maybe a bowl of food right next to you. When your cat moves, you say, nope. You grab the food and you take it away. You ask them to sit, you ask them to stay, you place the competing stimuli until they wait for the time that you're working on. How do you teach them the release command then? Once they know to sit and stay, you can teach them the release command. You can say, go ahead and put the food closer to them, encouraging them to go and eat. At the beginning, you're going to say, go ahead, get the food very close to them, and with time, you're going to see that keeping the food farther and farther, they know that they can go and get that food anyways. Level six is desensitization. Desensitization is not only hard to teach, it also takes time. Desensitization is the process of getting a cat that's scared about something or fearful about a situation to stop considering as threatening or fearful. The way to do it is by repetition of small good experiences that are going to build towards the situation that we're trying to desensitize. For instance, if your cat is scared of the carrier because we've been using it exclusively to go into the bed, which now you know it's something that you should not do, we can use the sensitization to eliminate the fear towards the carrier. Start by placing the carrier outside where they can see it in days that you don't need to go to the bed. Place food inside the carrier so that your cat considers getting inside to getting that food. If they get inside on their own, reward it. Make that experience even a more positive one. When you're playing with your cat, use the carrier as one element more amongst the ones that you like playing with. Even consider closing the carrier and moving the carrier around your house when they get inside on their own. Always rewarding afterwards. When a cat that was fearful about the carrier starts getting inside the carrier on their own, means that we have successfully desensitized the fear towards the carrier. Level seven, competing stimuli. Training a cat for obedience is a lot easier than most people think indoors. Training obedience when there's competing stimuli, it's a whole different story. As I've said before, competing stimuli are reinforcers that are competing with the reinforcer that you're using, which is food. A bird, it's going to win over your dry treats 90% of the time. A bird is actually going to win over your freeze-dried chicken. But I can assure you that the first thing that you can do to try to win over competing stimuli is to have the strongest reinforcer possible and having high quality treats really helps. The second thing that's gonna help you against competing stimuli is repetition. If you can get your cat to internalize a behavior to a point that they don't think 
when you ask it, you're going to be able to get that behavior even if there's competing stimuli around. Mia has learned that every time I call her, she gets her favorite treat. She's built such a strong reaction to come when called that even with competing stimuli around, she comes 70 or 80% of the time, which makes my life very easy when I'm outdoors or I wanna go to bed. The more anti-natural that the behavior is to a cat, the more difficult it's going to be to teach it to them. Teaching a cat tricks should come from our willingness to enrich their lives, not as a selfish interest to bending them to our will. Any cat, regardless of their age or breed, can learn clicker training. It's so easy that everyone can teach it to their cat. The other day I took a random survey and I saw that 70% of our audience have not started clicker training their cat yet. If you're one of them, take the communication with your cat to the next level by clicking this video and learning clicker training in three very, very, very easy steps.